I got this really cool LC meter kit and thought it would be fun to film a build video for it. This meter allows you to measure the values of small inductors and capacitors. It comes with a nice little display that you just need to solder some header pins onto. The PCB has clear markings for the components which are all through hole and are spaced well for easy hand soldering. It comes with everything you need except for a power supply and test leads. I'd recommend using some different header pins for the power and test connections. I'll talk more about that later in the video. The included instructions are well written and describe the assembly process well. It also includes the schematic for the circuit, which is a nice touch. Before we get into the build, I wanted to show off the completed device. Note that I'll include the link for the kit and other relevant tools from this video in the description below. This long button on the side controls which mode you're in. The extended position is inductance mode, and pressing the button in puts it in capacitance mode. In capacitance mode, you're supposed to press the reset button to trigger a calibration before you can start taking measurements. When it's calibrated, the screen should show 0 PF for picofarads. Let's test this out with a 22 PF SMD capacitor. I'll kick off another calibration to make sure that we're starting from a good state. So this says about 23.6 PF. The tolerance of this capacitor is 5%, so I'd say that's pretty close. Something that's nice about this device is that it features an auto-ranging system, so you don't have to manually select the range for the component that you're measuring. Let's try another one. This one is a 47 PF 5% capacitor. It's measuring that at about 48 or 49 PF. That's looking pretty good. For this build, I'm going to put the PCB into this handy holder that makes it easy to place components and then rotate the board to solder them on the back. Here's a short tour of my solder station. You can see the empty board that's ready to go. I'll be using a digital microscope to help with inspecting the board and for some of the filming. Note that for through hole stuff like this, you definitely don't need a microscope to complete this project. I'll be using my Weller digital soldering station set to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit since I use lead free solder. On standby, I have a flux pen and some tip tinner. I have my wire sponge that I can't live without and don't forget some no clean solder wick, hopefully we won't be needing that though. I built a fume vent that clamps in the window at the back of my bench. It's made with a high CFM PC fan and a 3D printed hose adapter that I designed in OpenSCAD. I'll link to that 3D model in the description below. I have two spools of different diameter Kester lead free solder. I'll be using the larger one that has a diameter of 0.031 inches. This is my hot air station, unlikely that we'll be needing that today though. I also have a reflow toaster oven that I built from a kit. I'll definitely be using that in a future video, so consider subscribing if that's something you'd be interested in checking out. Okay, let's get into the build. The instructions tell you to start with the lowest profile components first. They do a good job of telling you how to identify each component, and they match those up with the symbols on the PCB's silk screen. I tested the resistors off camera with my multimeter just to be extra sure that I didn't mix anything up. When soldering the crystal component, you need to ensure that it's raised up off the PCB so that the metal case doesn't come into contact with the pads underneath, otherwise it will create a short.
I wish I had test fit the screen before soldering the header pins for the power and test leads. The screen totally blocks the header pins. I'm not sure why this is the case. It's possible that the manufacturer switched to a different screen part that's maybe a bit larger and now that covers the header pins. I tried getting better access to the header pins by bending them 90 degrees. This works but doesn't make the best connection with DuPont style connectors. I finally decided to replace the header pins with some proper angled headers that I have on hand. It's a bummer having to rework what would have otherwise been a flawless build. I added some solder to bridge the pins on the back of the board and then heated it up gently while pulling the header from the other side. To put the new angled header pins in, I basically did the same procedure in reverse. I should have thrown some flux on the header pins before doing this, but I totally forgot. After I got the new header pins seated, I touched up the pads with flux and additional solder. Then I cleaned the pads with some isopropyl alcohol. When I removed the first header pins, I kind of just went full cowboy and ended up ripping a pad off the top of the PCB by pulling on it too hard while heating the back. Total rookie mistake. Luckily this pad isn't connected to anything and it's purely just for support. If you look at the back side of the board, you can see the trace that's doing all the work. So I guess that was pretty lucky. Now we can just slap the IC chips into the sockets and this build is good to go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you next time.